Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you for coming. Uh, as you're aware, uh, last night uh, on the Gold Coast, Pacific Pines Tavern, uh, there was a robbery in progress. Uh, local police from Coomera have responded to that um, armed robbery. Uh, and unfortunately, during the uh, course of that event, uh, Detective Damien Leading uh, has been critically wounded. Our hearts and minds and thoughts, of course, are now with his wife and family and indeed uh, with Damien, uh, who is in the Gold Coast Hospital. Uh, we hope and pray that he recovers uh, from these um, awful injuries. I might uh, allow the Commissioner to provide uh, the detail of the events uh, and whatever other information is available and then we'll be happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Minister. As the Minister's indicated, this, uh, the, the police vehicle concerned that was the first response vehicle contained two detectives from the Coomera CIB. Uh, they were working that night and were on patrol duties. Um, they arrived at the, um, the tavern, uh, the Pacific Pines Tavern, at approximately uh, quarter to 11 last night. The um, armed robbery, it will be alleged, was still in progress at that time. Uh, soon after that, um, uh, Senior Constable Damien Leading was shot in the head with a shotgun. Uh, he is currently in a critical condition in intensive care at the Gold Coast Hospital at Southport. His family are with him and his wife is by his side at the moment. Um, we hold grave uh, concerns, obviously, for his, um, his uh, overall condition. Um, in terms of the investigation, um, soon after um, um, uh, Senior Constable Leading was shot, uh, a district duty officer, a senior sergeant, uh, was at, at the scene and he uh, provided first aid and CPR assistance to a senior constable leading. Uh, the next unit that arrived soon after again was a dog squad unit. Uh, the dog squad officer and the dog successfully tracked two people who were in the vicinity uh, and they were detained and since then a third person has been detained. Um, whilst we have a completely uh, open view, of course, in relation to the investigation, um, we believe that those three people primarily will be able to assist in this investigation. That doesn't exclude the possibility, of course, that others may be involved on the periphery. Uh, it's still a long way to go with the investigation. Um, I'm sure you'll understand that in terms of that aspect, there may well be things that we're not in a position to disclose at the moment or may simply not know at this point in time but uh, certainly prepared to take any questions you have. You, uh, the person who fired the shotgun, is he in, in, uh, in custody? Well, uh, that's part of the current investigation. Hopefully we'll be in a position to advise um, more fulsomely about that later. You were saying uh, earlier this morning, Commissioner, that it was a hostage-type situation. Could you elaborate on that? Uh, not to any great extent. Um, uh, only to this extent that... Um, uh, this, uh, we will be alleging that this offence occurred around closing time and we'll be alleging that hostages were involved and we'll be alleging that the hostages involved both staff and patrons. Commissioner, given the state of armed robbery that's been down the coast lately, were you fearful something like this might happen? I always am. I always am. The, 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 uh, the worst case scenario for us, of course, is police who are the first responders uh, to um, matters such as this armed robberies. Uh, in particularly uh, in a situation where there may be hostages and firearms are involved. Um, and as I've mentioned earlier today, and it's correct, uh, when the police are aware and get called to an armed robbery in progress, they have to attend. That's their role. That's their responsibility. Uh, but they, in the immediacy of that situation, they have no idea what they're about to confront. Uh, but they have to go, and this is what's happened last night. The worst case scenario from our point of view. Uh, well, I, I think without question, and, I'm, and if we could just separate ourselves out from what happened last night, because we don't know the motive uh, for this matter last night, but without question, one of the contributing factors are drugs. People desperately in need of money to, uh, money to purchase drugs. And that links into uh, the advice we always give uh, to people who are the victims, whether they're the... And, and most of the premises are, of course, what are called soft targets, so such as 7-Eleven type stores or 24-hour surveys where there is only one person working. So our advice always is to those employees not to be a hero, give them the money 
and don't don't try and fight or argue with them. And one of the reasons we say that is because quite often the people who do this are completely uh, are very irrational. It's far too early to know. Commissioner, why, how, how, what was the uh, sort of scenario? Why did the police get there so quickly? Were they in the area at the time? Look, I'm not certain of that yet, but I think it's a reasonable assumption to say that they were in the area on patrol and um, uh, were there indeed very, very quickly. Yes. Is it time for, a, uh, for an armed robbery squad on the Gulf Coast? We have an, an obviously an armed robbery squad here at State Crime Operations Command in Brisbane. And the issue as to whether there should be an armed robbery squad on the Gold Coast is still on the table. No decision has been made about that yet, and that's um, under ongoing consideration. Wasn't it uh, your view just a couple of weeks back that it wasn't needed? Uh, to date, we have not felt that it was necessary. What I'm saying, though, is that it's still on the table, and um, it, no final decision has been made in that regard. But this Uh, every incident um, would obviously, in the totality of armed robbery offences in any given period, um, is something that we keep under consideration and changing trends and developments is something that we keep under consideration. So what I'm saying is that the possibility of an armed robbery squad for the Gold Coast is not off the table, but to date we believe that uh, the armed robbery squad based here in Brisbane at State Crime Operations Command, together with the work of local detectives throughout the state, has been an adequate response. No, it's not. Yeah, this is a tragedy. Um, but armed robberies, regrettably, are not confined to the Gold Coast. They occur throughout Queensland. And severe violence of the type that we've seen last night to a police officer equally is not confined to the Gold Coast. We don't know. We don't know at this point, and I'm not uh, able to tell you that's part of the investigation. Does the level of organisation displayed by these people last night suggest to you that this was something more than just people who were the drugs? Um, what I have said this morning is that this, is the, this, in my view, is at the higher end of the scale in terms of, of an armed robbery, and clearly where a police officer is shot and is a critical um, life-threatened state uh, that I think would demonstrate, and most people would not argue that that is so. The Corporate Police Company inside? I'm sorry? The Corporate Police Company inside where the robbery is taking place from outside? Uh, I'm not certain. Well, you said earlier today that he was shot as he approached the building, so can you clarify, was he shot outside the tavern? Did he ever make it inside? My understanding is that he was shot outside. In the car park? No, I'm not saying in the car park. My understanding is that he was shot outside the building. Uh, we don't know. Um, oh, always uh, one one firearm used in a crime is, is one firearm too many. Post Port Arthur, the prevalence of firearms in violent crime declined significantly, uh, but it does seem as though it's increasing again. Uh, and something that is something that we need to be very alert to, very conscious of, and to do all that we can in terms of prevention. Most of the firearms that are used in illegal crime are not registered firearms. They're not, they don't belong to people who own them lawfully and have a licence for them. Most of them are obtained through the illegal gun trade. And as commissioner, are you comfortable with the laws the way they are, or do you think they should be registered? No, oh, no, I think the laws are OK, and ultimately laws are a matter for the government, but I think the laws are OK. Um, again, um, we do a lot of work in terms of illegal firearms, uh, but um, clearly um, when, when, if the use of firearms in armed robberies continues, um, and, and obviously that's something we need to monitor very closely, and it may mean that we need to look at options in terms of additional things that we're doing beyond what we're doing now. Well, I think as the Commissioner said, um, all laws are under scrutiny all of the time. Um, Queensland, along with all other states and territories, have very uh, stringent uh, regulation of weapons. Um, as the Commissioner has indicated, uh, most of these types of crimes are committed by people who are not uh, registered owners of weapons. So 
Uh, whereas uh, we need to get to the bottom of this particular offence, uh, weapons legislation is always under review. Uh, I've currently re or recently introduced um, some proposed changes or some changes into the Parliament uh, and there'll be further uh, consideration of other changes in the coming months. I think this is just one additional element that will be considered in any review. Um, you know, all legislation uh, needs to be scrutinised and as I've indicated, uh, there are some basic national principles and agreements in terms of weapons legislation. Queensland complies with all of those requirements. It's very stringent. Uh, but again, uh, in many instances, we're not dealing with people who are legitimate owners or users of weapons. Uh, they're illegally obtained and obviously um, used for criminal intent and not for proper purpose. It's very hard to regulate uh, that other than the laws which we have in place, which are the penalties for that misuse. Commissioner, the police returned fire last night. Have you been able to ascertain that? No, that's part of the investigation. We can't rule that out, but at this stage I don't know. What effect will this have on the, uh, you know, the officers down on the Gold Coast? Um, well, obviously, for the officers in the CIB at Cooma, um, that's a traumatic uh, thing to have happen, to have a colleague um, yeah, who has been shot um, and um, who's in a critical situation and, and, and life-endangering uh, in intensive care. Um, both the Assistant Commissioner, myself and other senior police have met with and talked with his colleagues today. Um, one of his colleagues was um, with him as, as the first responder. Uh, she also, in my view, acted with uh, bravery and courage. Um, but um, we will do all we can to support those officers. Police know that in the nature of the work they do, that the, the, there is ever present, the ever-present threat and risk of danger. You can't provide for the safety and security of people and not put your own safety and security at risk. So they're aware of that risk. But nonetheless, when something like this happens, it is extremely uh, traumatic for the people involved. Was the female officer injured in any way? No, she wasn't. Um, uh, no, they're not. But I, I understand that two are males and one is a female. Not that I'm aware of, no. Do you have any ages? No, I don't. She works on the Gold Coast. Uh, we're not at this stage disclosing the station that she works at. She works on the Gold Coast. I'm sorry. Well, well, this is an issue which I've been questioned about many times and I hold to the same position that, that ultimately uh, the decision about whether an armed robbery squad, squad is required on the Gold Coast in Brisbane or in North Queensland is entirely a matter for the police commissioner. Um, it's not the responsibility or indeed um, uh, the role of a minister or a government to dictate to the police commissioner how and where he should allocate those resources. So again, uh, this is a matter that police need to be able to determine uh, themselves. Uh, they uh, provided the resources by government. Uh, they are the ones that uh, have got the responsibility for enforcing the law. Uh, and therefore, how those resources are allocated, what specialist squads are established and where they're positioned as a matter is an operational decision of, uh, of the police commissioner and his senior executive. Commissioner, just in terms of uh, Detective Lee, can you tell us when he graduated from the academy and where he worked in Fort Kuma and how long he's been at Kuma? He has um, eight years service. Um, so um, he would have graduated in 93, uh, I, I imagine. Um, yeah, um, I'm sorry, 2003, of course, forgive my maths. Uh, he graduated in 2003. Uh, he's worked, uh, his entire career has been in the southeast region at uh, Surface Paradise, Gold Coast CIB. And he went to Coomera CIB when we created Coomera as a district um, about 18 months ago. He was one of the founding detectives there. And how old is he? 34. She's a senior constable as well. Yeah. Um, my understanding is that he's 34, but as you would appreciate, um, the fine detail of these things, um, sometimes, um, you know, um, we don't have till after, but, um, yeah. No, I'm not able to disclose that. Yeah, I think that would be okay. Um, uh, in the vicinity of the uh, the tavern, um, a woman and a male person were located uh, by a dog squad officer. And were they in the uh, Again, um, that's part of the ongoing investigation. 
Now, again, I'm not in a position to disclose that. That, that was some time later that the third person was located. What I have said, which I'm happy to repeat, is that um, we'll be alleging uh, that this uh, occurred around closing time. We'll be alleging that it involved hostages and we'll be alleging that those hostages were a mix of staff and patrons. Uh, I'm, th that's a degree of detail that is not appropriate for me to go into and, um, and I'm sure you would understand that, that I'm not the, you know, one of the investigating team of detectives in this. Um, and the investigation is ongoing, it's extensive. Um, we're putting all the resources that um, are needed into it um, and um, all of these details will emerge in the, obviously in the fullness of time. No. And at what time is Well, I, sorry, no, I, I, I haven't got that information, no. It was sometime, obviously sometime this morning. And, uh, sorry, did, did you say, did either of the responding now, what I said was that um, whether, and the question that was asked was, was there an exchange of fire? And what I said was that uh, we don't know, and that is part of the investigation, and that is between um, uh, senior, senior constable leading, um, well, that's how I took the question, between senior constable leading and the person responsible for shooting him. And my answer to that question is that we don't know at this point in time. That is possible, we don't know, and it's part of the investigation. Uh, no, I don't. I'm not aware of whether she did or not. I don't believe that she did. And in terms of the uh, investigation, will, will outside officers come in to investigate aspects of the shooting while the Cooper officers investigate the armed robbery? Uh, how it works is that, um, that um, and, and not that the officers um, from Damien's workplace could not investigate this, but in fairness to them, we don't think um, that that's appropriate. Um, so investigators from outside of the Coomera CIB will conduct the investigation. I'm sorry, I didn't hear your question. Are you able to release the data to the Well, we may be able to, uh, yes. I just don't have that with me at the moment. Uh, and, uh, but um, we may be able to come back to you on that, OK? Again, that's part of the investigation, and yes. So were they already in the process of fleeing when... Um, I'm sorry, again, that's part of the investigation. Did they give up without a struggle when they were apprehended by the dogs? Or not? Um, again, um, that's part of the investigation and uh, uh, that's something... And, and as well, uh, Spencer, I simply don't know the answers, the specific detail of that. Uh, no, I don't. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I don't think that he was very far from the building. Again, that's part of the investigation. All right. Well, thank you for your time. Okay. And, uh, we'll undertake, of course, to keep you informed as we are able to as how this uh, matter unfolds.